Ever felt like you're running in circles, trying desperately to hold someone's interest? You're not alone. But here's a secret. The more you chase, the faster they run. That's why today, we're breaking the cycle with ancient stoic wisdom that empowers you to attract, not persuade. Welcome to the stoic way of drawing people in with your calm, magnetic energy. In this video, we'll explore how embracing stoicism can transform your approach to relationships. Whether it's rekindling a fading romance, sparking a new connection, or nurturing a distant friendship, the answer isn't in the chase. It's in becoming a beacon of strength and stability. Imagine being so grounded in your stoic principles that others are naturally drawn to you, not because of frantic efforts, but because your serene confidence is irresistible. Today, you'll learn how to embody this stoic magnetism and make it work for you in any relationship scenario. Now, take a moment to declare with me. I attract with my stoic energy. Type it in the comments, let it resonate, and watch how the world starts gravitating towards you. If you're ready to stop the chase and start attracting, smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to not miss out on mastering the art of effortless charisma. Let's get started. Number one, drop the fear. All right, everyone, the first and most crucial step in becoming a true magnet is to shed your fear. This step is a game changer. When fear gets the upper hand, you lose control over your actions. You find yourself desperately seeking approval, bending over backwards for others, and doing just about anything to keep them around. But here's the kicker. It's that very fear that pushes people away. Picture this. You're interested in someone new. Anxiety kicks in, worrying you that they might not feel the same. In response, you overanalyze every interaction, text them incessantly, and try too hard to impress them. In these moments, you're not being yourself. You're a version of you that fear has taken over. And believe it or not, people can spot this desperation from a mile away. It's like gripping a bar of soap. The tighter you hold, the quicker it slips away. What happens when you ditch that fear? When you stop worrying if they like you back? You become more relaxed, more confident, and more in control. You stop the chase, and amazingly, people begin gravitating towards you. Dropping fear transforms you into a stoic magnet. You find completeness within yourself, and that's incredibly appealing. Now, you might be thinking, that's easier said than done. True, fear is tough to conquer. But remember, fear is all in your head. As Epictetus said, men are not disturbed by things, but by the views they take of them. It's not situations that foster fear, but our perceptions of them. So how do you actually let go of fear? Start by recognizing when fear sneaks up on you. The next time you're anxious about someone leaving or trying to make someone stay, pause. Ask yourself, what am I really afraid of? Often it's rejection, loneliness, or feeling inadequate. These fears are just figments of your imagination. They only exist in your mind and don't need to control you. Let's consider a relationship scenario. Say your partner seems distant. Your gut reaction might be to double your efforts, shower them with attention, and do everything to keep them close. But that's all fear talking. What if you let go of that fear? What if you focused on your growth and well-being instead of their approval? Suddenly, you're not chasing anymore. You're demonstrating confidence and self-assurance, and that's truly magnetic. Fear breeds neediness, while letting go breeds confidence. Imagine walking into a room. The person who enters with their head held high, calm and composed, naturally draws attention. On the other hand, someone who looks nervous and seeks approval repels it. Confidence comes when you let go of the fear of rejection or failure. 
That's the secret. You stop needing their validation. You stop seeking their approval. And surprisingly, that's when they begin wanting your presence. It's ironic, but the less you need someone, the more they're drawn to you. Remember, as the Stoics taught us, we often suffer more in our minds than in actuality. Many of the fears you wrestle with are unlikely to come to pass. The worst scenarios you dread seldom occur. So, why expend energy fretting over them? Shedding your fears is the most effective way to cultivate a magnetic aura. It frees you from the need to validate your worth. Instead, you live confidently, drawing towards you those who genuinely appreciate what you bring to the table. Now, let's close with a powerful affirmation. Close your eyes and declare, I attract with my stoic energy. Let go of the fears that hold you back and proclaim to the universe, I attract with my stoic energy. Remember, you don't chase, you attract. The right people will come into your life because they recognize your strength, confidence, and tranquility. Inform the universe that you've let go of your fears, and now it's time for the world to reach out to you. If you have any questions or thoughts to share, drop them in the comments. Let's discuss. And if this video resonated with you, hit that like button to show your support. Are you ready to delve deeper? Let's continue, my Stoic friends. The real adventure in our Stoic path is just beginning. Number two, give it your all and then just let it be. All right, my Stoic pals, as we've moved past fear and have started to embrace our inner magnet, there's a vital step to integrate into our journey. Give it your all and then let it be. This step is crucial. It's about pouring your heart into your efforts without fretting over the things you can't control. Consider this. Maybe you're in a relationship, or perhaps you're trying to catch someone's interest. You're pulling out all the stops, showing your finest qualities, being considerate, and really putting yourself out there. But here's where it gets tricky. If you fixate on whether they'll reciprocate your feelings, you're setting yourself up for stress. It's like baking a cake and obsessively checking the oven, peeking inside every few minutes, worried it won't turn out right. Despite doing everything right, you can't control how the cake bakes. And all that stress? It just spoils the fun. That's why it's crucial to do your best and then step back. Seneca famously said, the greatest obstacle to living is expectation, which depends on tomorrow and wastes today. You've done the legwork, showed up, and given it your all. Now it's time to let go of the outcome. No amount of worry or persuasion will alter it. You've already given your best shot. When you release the need for a specific outcome, you open up space for things to unfold naturally. This is where your magnetic power truly shines. Imagine trying to rekindle a dimming spark in your relationship. You've set up a special date. You're trying to reconnect. But here's the twist. The more you try to force the vibe, the less natural it feels. The more you aim for perfection, the more pressure you add, which might just push your partner away. Instead, concentrate on giving your best. Plan the date, be fully present, and show up as your best self. But after you've done that, let go of controlling their reaction. You can't dictate how they will feel, but you can manage how you present yourself. This doesn't mean you care less or lower your efforts. In fact, Stoicism teaches us to be fully engaged and exert our utmost in all we do. You focus on what you can control, your actions. Then, instead of worrying about the results, you trust the process and detach from the need for things to unfold a certain way. Think of it like planting a seed. You can water it, ensure it gets sunlight, and take care of it, but you can't force it to sprout. It will grow in its own time. 
The same goes for relationships, friendships, or any part of life. Do all you can to nurture it, then step back and let nature take its course. When you start adopting this mindset, you'll notice changes. People will pick up on your calm, confident demeanor, noticing that you're not obsessing over controlling every aspect. You're no longer desperately hoping for outcomes. Instead, you're content, secure in the knowledge that you've given your all. This kind of vibe, it's captivating. People are naturally attracted to those who don't seem desperate to micromanage their life's every detail. You become more appealing simply because you're relaxed about what the future holds. So, how can you make this part of your everyday life? Begin each day by reminding yourself, I can guide my actions, but not their outcomes. Whenever you find yourself fretting over whether someone will reply to your text, how a date might turn out, or if someone will like you, just pause and remind yourself, I've given it my all, now I'm stepping back. Concentrate on the journey, not the destination. It might be tough initially, as we're naturally concerned about results. But here's the magic of stoicism. Once you learn to release your grip after doing your best, you find tranquility. You'll see that stressing about results doesn't alter them. It only steals your current joy. As Marcus Aurelius wisely put it, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Your true strength lies in recognizing that doing your best is sufficient and there's no need to control the aftermath. Let go of the need for perfection and you'll discover a fresh sense of freedom. Let's wrap up with our affirmation. Repeat with me. I try my best and I let it be. Declare it boldly. Say it out loud. Even share it in the comments if you like. Show everyone that you're not held hostage by potential outcomes. You're attractive with your stoic energy, doing your utmost and trusting that things will align just as they're meant to. Now, let's carry this mindset forward, prepared to tackle whatever comes our way. Number three, prioritize your time. Why should others value your time if you don't? Consider this. Your time is your most invaluable asset. Once it's gone, it's impossible to reclaim. So ask yourself, why squander it on individuals who fail to recognize your value? Consider the typical scenario many of us find ourselves in. You're always on your phone, waiting anxiously for someone to text back, constantly adjusting your own schedule to align with theirs, or even worse, sitting idle, hoping they'll acknowledge you. This isn't just undervaluing your time. It's essentially handing it over to someone who doesn't respect or deserve it. What if you redirected that precious time towards enhancing your own life? Spend it on cultivating your talents, advancing your education, or deepening your passions. You transform into a figure of stoic magnetism by demonstrating to the world that your time is valuable and you are not about to squander it on fruitless pursuits. Let's use an analogy. Imagine your time as a golden ticket to the most exclusive event of the year. Would you give that ticket to just anyone? Absolutely not. You'd reserve it for those who truly value and appreciate its worth. When you begin treating your time with the respect it deserves, it sends a powerful message to others, compelling them to see its significance as well. Fear never beginning to live. Don't let your life be consumed by waiting for others to make up their minds or to notice you. Choose to live fully, starting right now. Invest your time wisely and you'll find that people will begin to notice and respect your selective availability. When you're not always accessible, it becomes clear that being a part of your life requires effort and sincerity. So, how exactly do you begin to treasure your time? Start by setting firm boundaries. Refuse to disrupt your life for someone who only offers you fleeting attention. 
Devote yourself to activities that bring you joy, personal growth, and a sense of fulfillment. Those who genuinely want to be part of your world will respect these boundaries and make the necessary efforts to match your investment. If you find it challenging to enforce these boundaries initially, keep this in mind. This process is about self-respect. You cannot attract the respect and attention of others if you do not first respect yourself. You won't become a beacon of stoic allure by being perpetually available. People gravitate towards those who value their own time and are unafraid to turn down requests that do not align with their values. Let's reinforce this together. I value my time. Join me, my stoic friends, in affirming, I value my time. Hold on to this belief and observe how the world shifts to respect and prioritize your time just as you do. Number four, picture yourself winning. Let's talk about the next vital step in our journey, picturing yourself winning. Now, you might be thinking, really? Just picturing success? That sounds too simple, doesn't it? But hang on, because this step is absolutely key to becoming irresistible. So why is this idea of picturing success so important? Let me explain. Picture this. You're about to enter a situation where you want to catch someone's eye. It could be a first date, a friendly chat with someone you find intriguing, or perhaps reconnecting with a partner who seems to be drifting away. What usually pops into your head first? Doubt. Thoughts like, what if things don't go smoothly? What if they're not interested? What if I mess up? Start clouding your mind. Right from the get-go, you're already envisioning the worst. Here's the crucial bit. Your thoughts shape who you are. This isn't just some pep talk. It's deeply rooted in stoic thought. Epictetus once said, we are what we repeatedly think. If you're constantly imagining failure or rejection, you're priming yourself to operate from a place of fear and insecurity. And that vibe tends to repel people. But what if we turn that around? What if, instead of fretting over what could go wrong, you start imagining everything going right? Picture walking into that scenario with confidence, speaking effortlessly, and presenting the best version of yourself. Visualize them responding with smiles, engaging in the conversation, and genuinely enjoying your presence. This practice of visualizing success isn't just about feeling better. It literally sets the stage for your actions. Your mind and body tend to follow the trail blazed by your thoughts. Now, it might seem a bit far-fetched, but trust me, Visualizing success gears your mind up for that reality. You become more likely to handle the situation with poise, less likely to be thrown off by little hiccups. It's as if you've rehearsed it all in your mind, so when it's showtime, you're fully prepared. But let's be honest, it's not always straightforward, is it? Sometimes, imagining success can feel like self-deception, especially if you're more accustomed to self-doubt or negative thinking. That's completely normal. So, how do you make visualization genuinely beneficial when it feels tough? How do you harness the power of positive mental imagery even when it's challenging? Here's a simple tip. Start with the basics. If the thought of everything going perfectly overwhelms you, just focus on one small thing at first. Maybe envision yourself walking into the room full of confidence, or imagine hearing laughter during a lively conversation. Begin with these small wins and build up from there. The more you practice, the more it feels like second nature. You're essentially teaching your brain to anticipate success instead of bracing for failure. Now, here's where it gets exciting. The universe really does react to the vibes you emit. By visualizing success, you start radiating confidence. You move away from seeking approval and trying too hard to impress. Instead, 
you begin to draw people towards you with your serene and assured energy. That's the essence of being a true magnet. Recall the last time you encountered someone who exuded confidence without arrogance. They were just effortlessly cool and composed. They didn't need to show off, and yet everyone seemed drawn to them. That's the magic of visualizing success and truly embodying it. You're not looking for others to validate you because you've already affirmed yourself in your thoughts. You've envisioned it, felt it, and now you're living it. This principle also extends to your relationships. Seeing yourself succeed in your mind's eye makes you more likely to behave in ways that foster actual success. Let's tie this back to Stoicism for a moment. Marcus Aurelius once said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. So by visualizing success, you're improving the quality of your thoughts, which in turn influences your actions. You'll find that your emotions become more balanced and you stop acting out of fear or desperation. Instead, you act from a place of composed confidence, which is truly magnetic. To cement this mindset, let's affirm it together. I attract with my stoic energy. Say it with conviction. Picture yourself as that calm, magnetic force that naturally pulls others in. Shout it out and signal to the universe that you're done doubting yourself. You see your success, you feel it, and now you're poised to live it. Now, let's get ready to explore the next steps of our journey. Trust me, they're even more empowering. You'll want these tools in your Stoic Toolkit. Number five, manage your feelings. When emotions overpower you, you tend to lose your composure and it doesn't go unnoticed. People can sense this loss of control and it often repels rather than attracts. Conversely, when you manage to maintain emotional balance, you emanate an aura of strength, tranquility, and confidence. These are the magnetic qualities that naturally draw people towards you, making you a center of gravity in any room. Consider the roller coaster of emotions that relationships often bring to the surface. Jealousy when you see that unread message, frustration when plans don't go as hoped, or anxiety over perceived indifference. It's normal to feel these emotions. After all, we're human. However, these feelings, if not managed, can lead to actions that push people away rather than pulling them closer. Acting on every emotional impulse can make your interactions turbulent rather than tranquil. Imagine handling this differently. When you start to feel overwhelmed by emotions, instead of allowing them to dictate your reactions, you pause. This moment of pause is powerful. You feel the surge of emotions, but choose not to be governed by them. You take a deep breath, acknowledge what you're feeling, and then let those feelings pass without taking action. This is the Stoic way, the way of emotional mastery. By becoming the calm within the storm, you attract others who admire and crave stability in the unpredictable waves of life. Seneca's words resonate deeply here. He who is brave is free. True bravery isn't about being unemotional, but about managing your emotions wisely. This kind of bravery grants you freedom, freedom from the turmoil of being constantly pushed and pulled by external circumstances. You become a steadfast rock, unshaken by the comings and goings of daily strife. So, how do you begin to cultivate this in your daily life? Start with mindfulness. Next time you detect an emotional wave beginning to rise within you, hold off on reacting. Take a moment to reflect. Is this emotion worth disrupting my peace? More often than not, the answer will be no. This practice of pausing and pondering is not just about avoiding negative outcomes. It's about building a habit, a muscle that grows stronger with each use. If you find this challenging, don't be discouraged. 
Like any skill, emotional control improves with practice. Each time you successfully manage an emotional impulse, you reinforce your ability to remain composed under pressure. Keep in mind, people are not merely drawn to looks or intelligence. Emotional intelligence and the ability to handle oneself with poise under pressure are equally attractive. Let's reinforce this concept together. I master my emotions. Say it with me, loud and proud. My stoic friends, I master my emotions. By mastering this, you're not only making yourself more approachable, you're commanding respect and admiration. Through this practice, you transform not just your relationships, but your overall approach to life, making you a true magnet for positive interactions and genuine connections. Number six, foster an attitude of detachment. This step is pivotal, but often misunderstood. Embracing detachment doesn't mean you turn your back on caring about others or ignoring the significance of events around you. It's about severing the ties that bind your happiness to external conditions and people. Think about how often our moods and day-to-day -day happiness hinge on the reactions and behaviors of others or on the outcomes of situations we find ourselves in. When you deeply care about someone's approval or a particular result, you tether your emotional well-being to something you can't control. This can lead to feelings of anxiety, stress, and desperation. Visualize the times you've been glued to your phone, awaiting a response that might never come, or hoping for a turn of events in your favor. This constant state of expectation is exhausting, and frankly, it makes you less appealing. It's the essence of chasing, not attracting. However, when you practice detachment, you alter this dynamic. You don't become cold or dismissive. You simply stop allowing your peace of mind to be contingent on how others respond to you or on the unfolding of events. Here's a practical example to illustrate this. Imagine you're a gardener planting seeds. You do everything right, preparing the soil, planting the seeds at the right depth, watering them, and ensuring they get enough sunlight. Once you've done all that, you have to step back and allow nature to take over. It wouldn't make sense to spend every moment worrying over each seed's growth. Instead, you trust the process, knowing you've done your part well, and then you detach from the outcome. This is the essence of the stoic approach to detachment. You invest your efforts and care but you refrain from clinging to specific results. Epictetus, one of the stalwarts of Stoic philosophy, encapsulated this when he said, make the best use of what is in your power and take the rest as it happens. This wisdom reminds us that while we can control our actions and preparations, the outcome often lies beyond our grasp. Embracing this form of detachment liberates you from emotional turbulence and allows you to remain calm and collected, regardless of circumstances. This stability is incredibly attractive and draws others towards you as they sense your independence and self-assurance. So, how do you begin to embrace this transformative practice? Start by concentrating on your actions and efforts in any situation without over-fixating on the results. Commit fully to your tasks, engage deeply with your relationships, but release your attachment to the outcomes. Whether people respond positively to you or not doesn't define your worth or alter your course. You are complete and commendable, with or without their validation. Let's affirm this shift in mindset together. I am detached. Repeat it with me loud and proud, my stoic friends. Let the cosmos know that you are not chasing anyone or anything. You are attracting good into your life by being centered and at peace. Embrace detachment and observe how naturally people are drawn to you when they see you are not dependent on their approval or presence. Number seven, develop a grateful mindset. You might be curious, 
How can being thankful enhance my appeal to others? Here's the scoop. Gratitude truly transforms your outlook. By appreciating what you already have, rather than fixating on what's missing, you emit a positive vibe that naturally draws others to you. Think about this scenario. Who would you rather hang out with at a gathering? Someone who constantly gripes about everything they're missing, which feels as draining as listening to endless complaints about lousy music, or someone who celebrates the present, savors the company, and relishes the atmosphere. The latter person, who practices gratitude, spreads a joy that's downright contagious. Picture yourself trying to catch someone's interest. Instead of obsessing over whether they notice you, you focus on valuing the people in your life, cherishing joyful moments, and seizing the opportunities before you. This shift means you're no longer seeking approval because you're already fulfilled by the gratitude in your heart. And guess what? That's when you become truly noticeable. Seneca, a wise Stoic philosopher, once remarked, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Living with gratitude helps you cherish the present moment. You stop worrying about potential problems or who might drift away. You adopt an abundance mindset, and this sense of plenty is incredibly alluring. So, how can you start incorporating gratitude into your everyday life? Begin with small steps. Each day, take a moment to think of three things you're thankful for, however minor they may seem. As days pass, you'll notice a significant shift in your perspective. You'll feel happier, more serene, and more connected to the positive energy that surrounds you. If it feels challenging at first, remember, gratitude strengthens with practice, just like a muscle. Let's affirm it together now. Shout it out with me, my stoic fellows. I am grateful. Repeat it with conviction. I am grateful. Watch how, with this mindset, life and everyone around you begin to lean into your positive energy. Number eight, embrace the process. Okay, everyone in our stoic community, we've walked through all the essential steps and here we are at the culmination of our journey. Take a moment and let everything we've covered really settle into your mind. This is the point where all our discussions fuse into something truly impactful. You're equipped now with the tools, the strategies, and the right mindset. It's time to make them a part of who you are. Think of it like preparing a sumptuous meal. You've spent the day meticulously adding each ingredient, ensuring every element is just right. You wouldn't rush to serve this dish straight away, would you? No, you'd let it rest, allowing the flavors to meld beautifully. That's exactly what we're doing here. Transforming into a stoic magnet isn't something that happens instantly. It's a gradual process. However, believe me when I say, as you let these lessons and insights permeate your being, people will begin to take notice. They'll see the change. You'll find yourself no longer needing to pursue or persuade. Instead, people will be drawn to the serene, assured aura you emit. Remember what Epictetus once declared, no great thing is created suddenly. Just as a majestic tree needs time to stretch its roots and branches, so does your path to embodying the essence of a stoic magnet. You've put in the effort, releasing your fears, cherishing your time, and controlling your thoughts. Now, let these transformations embed themselves into your everyday actions. What if you stumble along the way or catch yourself reverting to past behaviors? That's completely normal. We're all human after all. The important thing is to catch these slips, acknowledge them, and steer yourself back using the principles you've learned. Every time you manage to do this, you reinforce those powerful stoic practices. How can you effectively let it all sink in? Patience is key, 
you've sown the seeds of confidence, self-worth, and emotional mastery. Give them time to sprout and flourish. Remind yourself daily of the strides you've made and have faith in the process. Over time, you'll witness a transformation, not just in how others perceive you, but in how you view yourself. Let's affirm this together to close out our journey. I attract with my stoic energy. Proclaim it boldly, believe in it fervently, and watch as the world mirrors your newfound strength. You've laid the groundwork. Now, it's time to relish the outcomes. As we conclude today's exploration into the stoic way of life, remember the essence of what it means to truly attract, not chase. By embodying the calm, magnetic energy we've discussed, you become a beacon of stability and confidence, irresistibly drawing others towards you. It's about letting go of fears, embracing your own worth, and manifesting a serene presence that others naturally gravitate to. Thank you for joining me on this transformative journey. If this video has sparked a shift in your perspective or inspired you in any way, please press the like button and subscribe for more empowering content. Don't forget to turn on notifications to stay updated on our latest uploads. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences. Have you noticed changes in your relationships by applying stoic principles? How has the concept of attracting rather than chasing influenced your interactions? Drop your comments below and let's continue this enlightening discussion. Also, rate this video from 1 to 5, where 1 is the lowest and 5 is the highest, to let us know how we're doing. And don't leave just yet. Check out the recommended videos on the screen for more insights and practical tips to enhance your life with Stoicism. Dive deeper into the art of living well and discover how you can refine your approach to daily challenges. Remember, the path to becoming a Stoic magnet is ongoing, and every step you take is a step towards a more centered, confident self. Keep pushing forward, keep reflecting, and let your Stoic energy shine through. Until next time, keep attracting with grace and wisdom.